The great Teddy Renner was in the final against Nikiforov of Belgium in the 2017 World Openweight Championships. And, wow, I always thought it was going to be a minus 100 kilo player that was going to cause Teddy Renner some problems. And Nikiforov came out non-stop attack and he really took the fight to Teddy Renner. In the end, he didn't quite have the power or the height. And I think that we can see that when we see them lining up to, against each other. But it was a great match. Nikki Forov gave it everything. And the great Teddy Renner did exactly what he should have done. Just kept his cool and kept to his tactics. The final of the 2017 World Openweight Championships for men and um, well Teddy Renner on your left here against Nikki Forov of Belgium and well it's going to be interesting because Nikki Forov has had the most remarkable day here and uh, got all the way through to the final he's a minus 100 kilo fighter but look at the difference in the range here and straight away we can see here that the strategy of Teddy Renner is to take advantage of his range and to dominate the back of Nikki Forov. And you can see here, big arm over the back and uh, that he's pulling the head down here of Nikki Forov. He's got the grip here and this is his main play. But uh, as we pointed out earlier, uh, one of his main things in his later uh, contest was his sumigeishi. There's the sumigeishi there. Let's have a look how he gets into it, first of all. And uh, it opens up the account here. Pulls the head down here of Nikki Forov. The left arm here catches the belt. So as he catches the belt here, then decides to change direction. Look at the sumigeishi there. And, uh, well, manages to take Nikki Forov all the way over onto his side. So he opens up the account here. Teddy Renner, the crowd loving it straight away. But Nikki Forov is an all-out action fighter. He has nothing to lose here, really. He's just had a magnificent day, like I say, and he could just take the fight to Teddy Renner, which is exactly what he does. He keeps going forwards, trying to get the big right arm over the back of Teddy Renner, which isn't going to work because, of course, he hasn't got the height. There's the drop Sianagi of Nikki Forov. And you can see that, well, Nikki Forov really just out there to prove that he can give him a good fight. So the difference in the power we can see. And there's the dominant grip again of Teddy Renner. Nikki Forov there trying to attack with an ashy wazza but well we can just have a look there that well you can see by the just looking here at his opponent um that teddy renair is feeling quite confident about his dominance and just a little faint there with the hips trying to get a reaction from nikki forov nikki forov at this stage doesn't know what to do to make an attack Ashi was uh, there from Teddy Renner. Has a little go at his Sumigeishi again. Nikki Forov ready to go. So Teddy Renner, as I said, going for a record uh, amount of world titles. Nikki Forov, well, he's just so happy to be in the final, but. Because he is such a hard fighter, he decides that uh, he's going to take the fight to Teddy Renner. Almost came unstuck there, didn't he? Just an overstretch there for the no soto. And you can see that Teddy Renner ready to counter there. Didn't quite have the grips for it. And, well, Nikki Forov just manages to climb off that one. One was Harry down. He's got nothing to lose. And just needs to take the fight to Renner. Renner's tactics to capture that sleeve. It's right to right, this uh, particular fight. And that makes it uh, a lot easier for Renner to capture 
that uh, sleeve and lapel. But uh, now, there's another Wazari here. Let's have a look how that happened. Because it was all about grips. And you can see here that, uh, yet again, Nikki Forov overstretching here. Didn't have any control here of Renair's head. And, uh, of course, Renair's grip here just enables him to get the counter. And we saw this. Uh, he nearly came unstuck the first time. This time he does come unstuck there. Gets thrown Osoto to Osoto there for a second Wazari. So Rene well in control against Nikki Forov in this final. Nikki Forov, though, again, like I said, it's all about, from a tactical point of view, coming forwards and taking the fight to Rene. And I always said that uh, if anybody was really going to uh, give Rene uh, problems, then it would be a light heavyweight. Let's just have a little look, see what happens here, because no score was given here. It was Yuchi Mata. We saw in the early rounds against Tushishvili that uh, Rene does sometimes this Uchi Mata. If you have a look at this support leg here, the support leg's on the outside here, and Rene attacks and drives. Well, he does a little Kouchi there, and you can see that he goes onto his backside. No part of his back actually touches the floor. So it was a really good decision there, no score. And when you see it done quickly, it looks as if there should have been a, a third score on the board. But uh, he kind of rolls onto the base of his bottom and then uh, rolls away from it. And so no score given. And of course, the referee um, was right there. He could see it. All the time trying to get his head free here, Nikki Forov, and trying to get his head up. Teddy Renet, well, being shouted at by his uh, by his coach there, just to keep it moving and change direction as well. I think he wants him to go over to the other flank. Renet just blowing a little bit. One minute fifteen left in this final. Rene knows that uh, just by dominating the head there and uh, he goes off two lapels this time. So uh, not looking specifically for the sleeve, but uh, absolutely dominating the head of Nikki Forov. Nikki Forov trying to come over the top. And again, a really good technique there from Teddy Rene. Uh, looking for the Ashi Garuma. He's had a lot of success during the day with the Ashi Garuma and the Uchimata. So uh, runs the Uchimata and the Ashi Garuma off the sleeve grip and then that big arm over the top. Uh, using the Ashi Waza as well. There comes the Sumageshi again. But uh, this time, Nikki Forov just manages to avoid it. So both the fighters giving their all. And the range and the height of Teddy Rene just bearing down on Nikki Forov. Nikki Forov, of course, just giving it everything that he's got. He's got nothing to lose. 36 seconds left in this final. Nikki Forov just wants to get on with it. And Teddy Rene, a little bit of tactics, just taking his time there. And now... That last 30 seconds of a contest, of course, so important because you don't want to change what's been a winning formula all the way through. He's got the sleeve again, he's got the lapel, and now Nikki Forov can't get that head up. Just manages to snatch the head back there. And he's going to get pen penalised for that. Teddy Ranieri can just afford a penalty or two, uh, so he will get a, a Shido for that. Just drifted out the uh, edge there. Nine seconds left. And it's all over by the shouting. Nikki Forov comes forwards hoping for a miracle. And Teddy Renier holds up both hands there. Ten world titles. Unprecedented. 
in men's judo. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, wins the World Open weight title. And, well, he gave it his all, didn't he? His tactics were to dominate the head and to dominate the sleeve. He did that all the way through. Nikiforov, absolute respect for Nikiforov because Nikiforov gave it his all. He's a light heavyweight fighting in the open weight uh, uh, division. We used to see that a lot, didn't we? With Robert Vandervel, used to do it all the time. And uh, they like fighting the heavyweights, but uh, just a little bit outpowered here. And magnificent performance from the great Teddy Renair, winning yet another world title. Learn the secrets of Uchimata. Available now on anyaffectedfighting.com.